Hello, lovely English learners, TOEIC students, anybody who stumbled across this channel. Today, we're going to look at six words that are often confusing in English and very important for TOEIC. Plus, we are going to look at four challenging TOEIC questions, and I'm going to show you how to easily get the answer. So, let's get started by looking at the vocabulary. The first word we're going to look at is worthy. This is an adjective. Now, if somebody or something is worthy, they are deserving of. They should get. And it's usually respect, recognition, rewards. Here's an example. The restaurant has received many positive reviews in newspapers and magazines. Okay, so the newspapers, the magazines have been saying good things about the restaurant. And I think the restaurant is worthy of these positive reviews. So you think the restaurant deserves these good reviews. Notice the form. Something is worthy of reward, recognition, positivity. Another example, his YouTube lesson only got a thousand views. I think it deserves more. So I think it is worthy of more. It is good enough, so it deserves more. Here's a little note. If you're using comparative, it is worthy, worthier, and worthiest. For example, he is the worthiest candidate applying for the job. So you're saying he deserves the job the most. Number two, the next vocab looks similar, but is slightly different, and this is worth. This means equal in value to something. Do not get it confused with worthy. The common form is something is worth amount. For example, according to my friend, her computer is worth $500. So if she wants to sell it, the value is $500. Or, very common, something is worth verb ing. Here's an example. If you go to Taiwan, it is worth going to the top of Taipei Tower. Note, it is worth verb ing. And this means you should do it. It is not a waste of money, not a waste of time. It is worth going to the top of the tower. One more example. That car costs a lot of money but it is not worth it. So this means the cost does not match the price. So you can say it is not worth that amount of money or it is not worth buying. Now, just a review of worthy compared to worth. That TV show gets a lot of awards and recognitions, but I don't think it deserves it. So here we are saying it is not worthy of the praise. It is not worthy of the rewards. But if you say, no, don't waste your time. Don't watch that show. That TV show is not worth watching. Okay, number three, elaborate. This is having a very detailed design. It's often a positive comment, but doesn't have to be. An example, the temple had a very elaborate design on the interior walls. So there are many details, many different things. Another example, the hotel's lobby had an elaborate fountain in the center. So this fountain was complicated, had many small details, elaborate. Notice that pronunciation, elaborate. Now in TOEIC, you will often see elaborate plus design, setup, interior, or structure. So having lots of details. However, there is a verb which is elaborate. Notice the difference in pronunciation. The adjective, elaborate. The verb, elaborate. And somebody elaborates on a subject, they give more details about it. Here's an example. I asked my friend why he missed the party. He said I was busy. I asked for details, but he wouldn't elaborate. He wouldn't give more details. Or, the press wanted the president to elaborate on his earlier comments. 
So they said, give us more, tell us more details. Number five is the verb address. If you address an issue, a problem, or a concern, you are dealing with it. You are trying to handle it, trying to focus on it. Here's an example. The new mayor of the city promised to address the issue of homelessness. So this new mayor said, I will deal with this. I will try to solve it. Or the large company had no females in senior management. Many people thought the company needed to address this issue. So many people thought the company needed to focus on this more, to promote more women, deal with this issue. So as you can see, if we address an issue, we are dealing with it. The other meaning of address is to speak to a group or a person or a crowd to focus on an issue in a speech. So there's two meanings you can see there. If the prime minister addressed thousands of supporters outside the parliament, the prime minister spoke to them. So he was focused on speaking to them. Or the prime minister addressed the issue of crime during the speech. Well, the prime minister focused on the topic of crime. Here's how it can get confusing. The president addressed... Let's look at another example. When we're speaking to someone, when he addressed his manager in an aggressive way, many other employees were surprised. So when he spoke to his manager aggressively. Now, address can also be a noun. If you give an address, you give a speech. So look how complicated this is. The president gave an address to the country on TV, so gave a speech. During the presidential address, so during the speech, the president addressed the issue of inflation. So talked about it. He said the government would do more to address the issue, deal with it. So address, as you can see, is complicated, but if you address an issue, it often means to deal with it. If you address a crowd, it means talk to them. And if you address an issue during a speech, you talk about it. Okay, let's get to the TOEIC questions. Here is 122. This is all about collocations. Now, collocations are common word partners. It is not B because we focus on a topic. We have no on, we have with, so eliminate B. It is not C because we address an issue. We do not address with an issue, so not C. It is not D because if we tackle a problem, we address it, but there is no preposition with. We tackled the issue of harassment. We addressed the issue of harassment. We focused on the issue of harassment. Therefore, the answer is A, dealing with, dealing. So we deal with a problem, which means we address the problem. We focus on it. We try to solve it. Let's go to the next question, 112. Well, let's eliminate A and C immediately. We remember the form, it is worth amount or worth verb ing, not it is worth to verb. So I will not say the movie is worth to watch. After worth, I will use verb ing if I have a verb or a gerund, sorry. So it is worth watching that movie, not it is worth to watch. So we eliminate C. Next, we know we do not say it is worth base verb. So we do not say it is worth watch the movie. That's incorrect. Correct, it is worth watching. So we eliminate, as you can see, 
A and C. Next, eliminate B because the use is a noun, but when we say the use, we need the use of something. For example, the use of the car costs a thousand dollars a day. Using the car costs a thousand dollars a day. So there is no of, so B is incorrect. Therefore, the answer is D, using. After this lesson, you could say, the lesson was worth my time. There you're using a noun. Or the lesson was worth watching. There you're using a gerund. All right, 119. Okay, we can use grammar to answer this question quickly and easily. First of all, when a sentence starts with not only, you will use an inverted sentence after not only. This means the statement looks like a yes no question, but it is actually a statement. For example, the original sentence says, the stadium will be built next to a subway station. There will also be free parking for bicycles and scooters. If I say this using not only, I say not only will the stadium be built next to the subway station, but there will also be free parking. Notice, I don't say not only the stadium will be, I make it look like a yes no quest question. The stadium, so not only will the stadium be built. Okay, because we now know it needs to be inverted, we can eliminate B and C. Next, we can use grammar, decide A or D. Let's think about the original. The original was the video, the video game design was overly elaborate or the video game design had overly elaborate. Well, overly elaborate is an adjective. So we're not gonna say, I had happy. You can say, I was happy, I am happy, I will be happy, but not I had happy, because happy is an adjective. So the only answer that we can choose would be was, was overly elaborate. Therefore, the answer is B. So not only was the video game design overly elaborate, it was also uninventive. Finally, 112. Well, we can eliminate two immediately because of grammar. First, eliminate A and D. Why? In addition to is a preposition. Therefore, you need a noun form after it. B, speak, is a verb. It is not a noun form. For example, he speaks about his childhood a lot. That is a verb. After in addition to, we need a noun because in addition to is a preposition. D is just a past tense verb. For example, if we look at speak, it is speak, spoke, spoken. So we cannot use D because it is a verb. So now we have A and C. Well, speech is a countable noun. She gave a speech. She gave many speeches. Here, we do not have an article, such as a or the. We also don't have a possessive adjective, such as her, his, its. Therefore, we cannot have a, because speech is a countable noun. As a result, we will use speaking. This is a gerund noun. This is a gerund noun. Remember, it's a noun form. This is not a verb, it's a gerund. As you can see then, the answer is C. Okay, so we looked at some complicated vocabulary today, some difficult questions. Please share, please subscribe, please like, Please hit that button or that bell, whatever you call it, and have a wonderful day, everyone.